What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Good Game Reviews. Look, I just wanted to make this really, really quick. Um, this is something I wanted to talk about for quite a while. It has to do in regards to the uh, trade deadline, which you know is all, which you all should know is coming up uh, pretty soon, October the 29th. Um, here is just like my thoughts on the whole situation. I believe that the Patriots have a clear weakness. It is clear to anybody who's been watching Patriots games uh, for the past few weeks now. Um, and no, it's not the injuries at the wide receiver position. No, it's not the lack of depth at the tight end position. It's not even the fact that we've managed to lose two of our fullbacks to the IR. No. The biggest weakness has come via the offensive line. And more specifically, uh, the left tackle position. Now, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And that weak link happens to be Newhouse, Marshall Newhouse. Uh, if you don't know, that's number 72. Um, he's bounced around the league for quite a while. Uh, I believe he's been to at least like eight teams already. So, I mean, that just tells you right there, you know, exactly how good this guy is. Um, as far as the Patriots success, or at least offensively going forward, I feel it's going to come down to the offensive line. You go back, look at last year. Look at um look at the playoffs last year. Everybody was talking about how the Patriots weren't able to get things on the roll, how Brady was old, how he didn't have any weapons to work with. You get Josh Gordon for a little while. He gets suspended indefinitely. So now you're down to just, you know, Edelman, um, an underperforming Chris Hogan, Philip Dorsett, and Cordero Patterson, who was pretty much just doing multiple different things on the field, but wasn't really doing any, like, specific one thing. And you think, hmm, you know what? This offense, or at least not Patriots fans, but at least like other people just looking at the Patriots, you know, hmm, this offense doesn't seem to have what it takes to move through the playoffs. Yes, they got the second seed, but do we really see them doing anything in the first round, or at least in the divisional game? And then it became clear. They attacked pretty much every team with the running game. And it isn't because Sony Michelle is just so fantastical, great, magical, whatever words you want to use. It was what they was doing with the formation. With the formation that they was using in the running game, it allowed Sonny Michelle to get so much productivity. And that wouldn't have been possible without the blocking. And yes, Rob Gronkowski, excellent blocker. Dwayne Allen, excellent blocker. You had the fullback, James Devlin, excellent. But those are three guys. You still got to think about those, those starting five right there in the front. With Trent Brown, Joe Tooney, David Andrews, Shaq Mason, Marcus Cannon. When you have that group together and they're clicking, best thing. I think they were like top five in terms of offensive line. At least that's what PFF had them at. You know, coming into the playoffs, they was like top five offensive line. That matters. I think in terms of just like what they was top five in, I think they was top five in both that and the secondary. So the secondary is, the secondary is good. 
you know, I ain't even gonna mention that anymore. I, I that's I just want to throw that nugget out there. But when you're ranked so highly in terms of offensive line, that can do a lot for your team. That can do a lot for your team. And right now, we need something like that to push us, you know, up to the, you know, up to the top. I know we. It seems like they're already at the top. They're six and zero. Oh. What are you talking about? What problems do they have? The offensive line is a big problem. And once you get to some of these, you know, I'm gonna say it, some better teams with some actual pass rush it is going to make life miserable for Tom Brady because he got sat like four times, I think, in Washington. Washington ain't supposed to be sacking people four times. Okay. So, what do they need? Like I said, it isn't wide receiver. They don't need no Stephon Diggs. They're not even going to get Stephon Diggs. They don't need AJ, AJ Green, who I think is, probably, is still hurt right now. And they don't need Emmanuel Sanders, although I would like that. I wouldn't have too much of a problem with it because I do like Emmanuel Sanders. But they don't. That's not what they need right now, and they and they don't need to go out and try to find another tight end, like or somebody like Tyler Effort. I heard his name thrown around. I mean that dude's just about as injury prone as uh, shoot as in, as any player you can find out there. I mean you thought Gronk had some injury problems? No, 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 no. no. Uh, but what the Patriots need is help at the O-line. And the person that they need, sorry I've been dragging this out long, but the per, but the person that they need is Trent Williams. I'm saying it right now. They need Trent Williams. Why do they need Trent Williams more than they need any pass catcher out there? Let me explain. Trent Williams is tired of the Redskins. He doesn't want to play there. It is obvious. Now, whatever the Patriots got to do, I ain't saying that they got to pull a a Rams move and throw out two first rounders in a, in a in a fourth rounder. I ain't saying that, but if I mean pretty much whatever they got to do to get that situation done, I would be behind it because we need to shore up this offensive line. You get Trent Williams in. Follow me. You get Trent Williams in. You have one more person that you can activate off of IR. It's already clear that they're probably going to activate Nikhil Harry. And they're going to pull him off of IR. He's going to be on the team. He's going to he's going to be a part of the 53-man roster. That's already that's I mean, you can pretty much, you know, bet on that. The next spot, I believe you go ahead and get Isaiah Wynn. Why? You, now you might be asking this: Why trade for Trent Brown just so later on you can activate Isaiah Wynn? Here's why. In my opinion, no matter who you have at that left tackle position, they're going to be able to they're they're going to be able to protect Brady, and the other guy can just act as you know maybe a swing. That's what that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like that. See, you have. So you have those guys out there. Imagine what you would be able to do. Now, please, just get this in your head. Gronk's not coming back. All right? Uh, this Tomlinson guy, this Eric Tomlinson guy that they uh, just acquired the tight end, apparently he's a good blocker. I mean, but we'll have to see. To have both of those guys available... Just in just and not in terms of just having all of them out there, like having like six all six old linemen out there at, at at a time running the ball. Not not just like something like that. You're not gonna do that every play. But just for the sake of depth, which they are clearly lacking at the left tackle position. Just for the sake of depth. I mean, come on. It seems like a, the easiest thing, like the easiest thing to just to do. Trent Trent Williams is obviously the move. He is the move. None of these receivers, none none of these wide receivers, none of these tight ends 
Trent Williams is the guy. Having an all-pro left tackle like that, protecting Tom Brady's blind side. Just imagine it. Because we all know Tom Brady's out there getting rid of the ball just like that. Imagine giving him an all-pro left tackle like Trip Williams. So you're already gonna have you're gonna have Julian Edelman out there and Nikhil Harry out there and Philip Dorsett out there and maybe a little bit of Jacoby Myers in, out there while, while uh, Josh Gordon is getting uh, you know trying to get back to his uh, full strength. While those guys are out there trying to run around trying to get open, you have Trent Williams protecting Tom Brady's blind side. Giving them time in the pocket. Newhouse is not doing that. I'm telling you right now. And if we if if they think they can just stick with Newhouse for the next couple of weeks that are coming up, they're in for a rude awakening. We have to see what happens in this Jets game tomorrow. Apparently CJ Mosley is coming back in. And apparently Quinn Williams is also back is also gonna be in there. So I mean, even though he's a D-tackle, so, I mean, but still, once we get to these better pass rushes, something has to be done about that left tackle spot. Marshall Newhouse is not the guy. He's probably been the guy for these, cu for these couple of games that we just played against some of these scrub teams, but he's not the guy. I'm just saying it right now. He's n he's not the guy. You're not you're not making it through this. You're not making it through the season with Marshall Newhouse, and you're definitely not going to make it through the playoffs with Marshall Newhouse. Something has to be done about that left tackle spot, and Trent Williams is that something. He is the move that needs to be made. Now apparently, the Browns are also in contention of tr of you know. Trying to get Trent Williams. Also, you know, we're still hearing things about the Redskins talking about them, talking about some not trying to uh, trade uh, Trent Williams. But we all know how good, you know, the front office word is. I mean, for the few past few weeks, we was hearing, oh, there's no way that we're interested in trading Jalen Ramsey. Uh, we're we're not interested. We're not interested in any deals of blah 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 blah. And what they do, just out of nowhere, Thursday. They, I think it was a Thursday. I want to say. Or was it? A, no, it was Tuesday. So just out of nowhere, Tuesday. <laughs> Boom, Jalen Ramsey to the Rams. And all it took was. Two first rounders and a fourth rounder, <laughs> which is a lot uh, for Jalen Ramsey. I uh, I can understand a f one first rounder, but two and a fourth rounder. All right, but yeah, but yeah. Anyway, man, but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't trust their word as far as them saying like, "Oh, we don't want to do any deals," you know. Let somebody come at, come at them with the right deal. That they'll be interested. That's all I got to say. But yeah, this has been uh, this has been good game reviews. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Uh, I recently created a Twitter for the page. Uh, I don't even have a Twitter for myself. So, I mean, that's just saying like, you know, how in touch I am with social media. <laughs> but yeah. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to have the game review, of course, after the game is done Monday. Look out for that. Until um, next time, I'm out.